this right here is what happiness and chaos looks like i'm all packed up it is november the third got off work got everything thrown in the truck here and we are loaded down and we are headed west from tennessee to illinois and uh, we're gonna be there for a couple weeks or just shy of a couple weeks and I'm so excited for this trip and thankful that I'm able to do it because last year I was not able to I had to stay at home so we're trying to make up for some lost time last year hopefully we can get us a big mature public land buck on the ground but I'm gonna run in here take a shower and we're gonna try and get on the road by four o'clock or shortly thereafter and I'm hoping to make it to um, the Illinois border in time to buy my license tonight, so I ain't got to worry about it in the morning. But I'll check in with you guys as we are going down the road. Bow hunter die, baby. Well, we have made it to Academy here right on the border of Illinois. $500 piece of paper is in hand. It has been acquired. Well, good morning, guys. I just hopped in the truck. It's uh, right at eight o'clock. Got in late, got camp set up. I don't think I laid down till 1.30, 1.45. Didn't really sleep great, um, but we're gonna get after it. But the game plan today is to do a lot of driving, um, drive by a lot of these areas I've hunted in the past and just see where the pressure is, you know, see where guys are hunting and hopefully pop into a few of these areas and get some stealth cams up and start gathering some intel. Got a big nine person tent. You might be able to see it's a mess, but got plenty of room for gear and clothes and everything and if you you know get a day or two of rain you have plenty of room to stay in there i also put up a little pop-up canopy a table with my grill and everything chair cooler you know all the camping basics was an absolute disaster. Everything's so crunchy. I was taking my time to get here, trying to, being as quiet as I could. Obviously stuff's still gonna hear you walking. I actually heard a couple deer walking on the other side of the ridge. But the first tree I picked was a little too big and this was the closest thing to it that had cover and it's like a shag bark hickory. So, I mean, literally everything within Several hundred yards hard to make climb this tree. It has been as dead as dead gets. Zero deer. We saw four or five turkeys and a woodpecker. That's it. November the 8th. This is my fifth day here in Illinois. I think this will be my fifth sit, I think. I have done a ton of scouting on a bunch of different pieces of public and uh, gotten on some good stuff. It's just the weather really hasn't cooperated since I've been here. We had warm weather the whole time, but that's about to change. Uh, I've scouted basically the whole first day and then every afternoon um, from midday on until yesterday. Last night was the first evening sit that I made, but we're going back in here to a piece that I found a couple days ago just by chance. I've never scouted anything within a couple miles of here, uh, but I was just driving around in the afternoon and just thought this set up really good on the map and looked good. Ran in there with a camera just in case and found a really good area that was just shredded. Um, came and hunted it yesterday morning and while I was in the tree my stealth cam went off about 80 yards away and had a big shooter on it big tall deer won't score super great but he's an awesome public land mountain buck so um, 
I'm going to slip in with the saddle. We got a little bit of wind this morning, which will kind of help cover up some noise. And with any luck, we might get this deer on the ground or at least lay eyes on him. I'd love to just see him, see what he looks like. But I'm going to finish getting ready. We'll see you guys in a tree. absolutely love this tree. This probably won't be the last time I hunt this spot, this specific tree. It is in the right spot. The bad news is the wind is swirling like crazy, so I don't have very high hopes. What just happened? Oh. I've been contemplating getting freaking down because this wind is so bad and swirling. He come right up that ditch. The only reason I even knew he was there is I heard him cough. I don't even really know what he is or how big he is. I just knew he was big enough. Holy cow. I hope I got it on film. I just had to zoom out and point it that direction. I, the camera was on this side and I had to shoot him on the other side. Oh my gosh. I've eaten tag soup the last two times I've been here. Shot one, didn't find it or couldn't go get it, long story. God, it feels so sweet. I have seen basically no deer. This is my fifth sit and I'm done. Sitting there celebrating and looked over and that big, huge, tall buck just walked down and up that ridge where the buck I shot ran. This stuff never really shows up good on the uh, camera. We'll see if we can put maybe a little topo or something, but basically got these tall ridges on this side and this side. And they all funnel down to this point and there's a ditch that goes right down the middle of them. And it's steep on both sides. 
and uh, it seemed like all the travel was running out each one of those fingers headed to this ditch. So you've got rut, great rut funnel first and foremost. Any buck that wants to check those CRP fields, you know, that, that's where a lot of does like to bed and bucks will too. But, you know, if they want to go check that one and then check this one, they got to come through here. And there was a ton of rubs. It was just shredded, you know, from October and even real, real fresh stuff. So it kind of told me they were living in here too. And I, I knew when I found it that it had the potential to be pretty special. But I'm going to run over here and grab my stealth cam I've got put up over here so I don't have to make another trip. And then we're going to go over here and take up the track. It's been eh, about probably close to an hour now. So I'll check back in with you in just a minute. Oh, I'm hoping this is going to be a short blood trail. When I, the shot, when I saw it like real time, I thought it drilled the offside shoulder. I know roughly where he was standing over here. I'm just thinking there's probably not an exit hole, so blood might be limited. But we shall see. The last place I saw him was over there in that green bar and stuff. He's somewhere right around in here. Check that out. Right there where he was standing. All right, we've got first blood here. You can see, it looks like we might have it on both sides because we've got it here and we've got it blown all the way back to there. That makes me feel better to have that blood like that right at the uh, impact. Can't tell you exactly which tree, but I was over there in one of those white oaks, those smaller white oaks, um, 35 yards. So longer shot, but especially in that wind, it's good blood. Oh yeah. I can pretty much see where the leaves are kicked up here. All the way down through there. Bleeding good already. Yeah, he's dead. We got plenty of penetration. I think he's going to be dead down in this ditch. not just one lung. I lost that section of arrow that come out of him. It was at least five inches on it just in case. He's bleeding too good for this just to be an entry hole. I see him laying down here. I can't. All I see is the white belly. I can't see his head to make sure it's down. It's about a hundred yards up here. Oh, he's down. Yes, baby, yes. I'm still going to sneak up there just to be sure. A big seven point. Look at that. Yes. Hallelujah. Not excited about getting this thing out of here, but we'll get it done. I'm going to sit here and enjoy this real quick, and I'll talk to you guys in just a minute. Well, guys, here he is, and I've got to say, this thing is bigger and cooler than I even thought. Uh, he's just a giant mainframe seven point. He had me worried for a minute. Um, he ran about 200 yards down, all the way down this ditch, down to the bottom, the very bottom. Died in the worst place possible for me to get him out. But uh, super thankful for this deer, to kill him on public here in Illinois. I think this is my fifth day here. And haven't seen a lot of deer, but I knew I was on the right stuff. And I knew this place here 
had the potential to be pretty special when I found it a couple days ago and uh, hadn't seen a deer all morning and then saw two shooters in a matter of 10 minutes is pretty incredible. This deer is definitely an old one. Um, got gashes in his ears, big body, huge blocky head. Definitely going to send the teeth off on this one to see um, just how big he is, but this is a great Illinois public land deer. For down here in southern Illinois in the mountains, this is a great deer. Super happy with him, but I'm in a race against Mother Nature. It is already hot and I have a long ways to go, so I got to get started on it. But until next time, bow hunter die. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Northeast Tennessee. It is November the 26th. And I would say the last time you saw me, I was in Illinois killing a pretty cool buck on public ground up there. We hunted here in Tennessee for the first time Thanksgiving morning and had a pretty good hunt. Saw quite a few deer, but it's just like a nursery in here right now. Um, I saw seven or eight deer and they were all, I think it was like four fawns and three spikes or four points, basically all spikes. This year has been a weird one. I've hunted this property for close to 20 years now. And you know, it's I've seen the peaks and valleys. You know, you've got a couple bad years and then you'll have a stretch where it's really good. But I think the absolute peak was like 2018 to 2020 as far as number of shooters we'd have. This year has been brutal, but it's probably been one of the best years for just seeing deer. So it's kind of odd. We're hoping for kind of a late season miracle here. I've, it's happened several times in the past. I've killed a bunch of good bucks in December, including the pie bald last year. I'm gonna try and hunt this inside corner down in the bottom. Seemed like that's where most of the activity was kind of centered around um, the other morning when I hunted. So finish getting ready. We'll see you in a tree shortly. We are set up later than what I wanted to be, but it was for good reason. I was slipping through this field behind me because I wanted to come to this inside corner. And I was moving slow because I could hear deer moving around up here in the woods. And I stopped and I heard deer running. It sounded like a, a doe getting chased and it's getting closer and closer. I'm like, they're running right at me. So I flipped my light on and the doe's coming right at me and she kind of veers off and she gets to about 10 yards in front of me and runs past me, loops around and starts turning to run back. And I hear the buck grunting, he's coming right at me. My light hits him and it's a shooter. It's one of those tall, tight eight points. I don't know which one, I've got three that look the same, but one, they're all different sizes. Definitely a shooter. He chased her back down into this bottom over here, but I'm getting ready to smack these horns together. We're just going to go for broke. I mean, hot dough in here can't hurt, so. slower than I thought it was going to be. I saw a pretty decent buck this morning, not long after I'd done the interview and rattled down below me here on the other side of this little field. We just had a really small spike come by, but that's that's been it. I heard some tines hitting together down there before I saw that buck. 
been pretty slow, slower than I thought, especially after how the morning started, but it's just probably 8.30, no, it's 8.10, so we still got time. Both of those arrows, the second arrow I missed, I just guessed it yardage, I rolled it, and it was a real tight window, but I'm not kidding, my arrow hit that far to the right on the first one and the second one. It's my fault, I haven't shot my bow the last week. I mean, that shot, that first shot, he was just broadside perfect, 20 yards. I hit that deer in the lungs nine times out of 10. I lost him right here. He's, he's, if he's not bedded down right now, he's gonna be. Absolutely hate that. I'm, I'm like, I mean, that shot was perfect. That's the deer I saw this morning. Almost sure of it. He's one of the tall, tight eight points. Yeah, I don't know, I hadn't. Something's definitely off. I don't know what, but all oh, my scope's loose. Yep, that's it. My sight's loose. Damn it. Alrighty, guys, we are on the ground and just got everything packed up. I'm gonna slide right over here and look at the arrow. I lost him. I saw him probably 15 minutes after the shot up here on top of the ridge. 
and I lost him up there. I'm hoping he lay down up there, probably 100 yards from us right now. The wind is mostly good. But we're going to check this arrow, and then we're going to slip out of here, and we'll come back later tonight. I hate it when this stuff happens. First thing I'm doing when I get home is shoot my bow and get it dialed back in. You just got to check your equipment. I, I've said that so many times, but we just get so caught up in what's going on. I got arrows right over here. I just want to get out of here without bumping that deer. That's the number one goal. There's some dead balls up there, and I think it's probably where he laid down. Right here's the arrow. a lot of blood for just a gut shot. I'm really hoping I caught the liver. Okay, I made it right back to the shot site. You can see, you can see I stuck the arrow in the ground right there. I'm gonna follow the blood trail enough to get the second arrow that I shot and I want to clean off the lens on my stealth cam. It's got a bunch of moisture and just dirt on it. I didn't clean it off before I put it out. And then I I watched him go under this, you know, five or six string cattle fence up here. And I'm gonna just walk that fence till I see where he went under and then take up the trail from there. I did not find one ounce of blood crossing that fence, but I come up here to the last place I saw him, and he did bed down. I see him laying up here. Well, here he is, and thankfully this rain decided to hold up at least until we had found the deer. Um, I was starting to get a little bit worried. I decided not to follow the blood from the impact site just because we were working with so little daylight, and it was honestly hard to see. But I decided to jump ahead to where I had seen him cross this cattle fence up here and wasn't able to pick up blood. So I ended up pushing up about 20 or 30 more yards to around where the last place I saw him was. And, looked over and he was laying there dead and honestly i don't think he'd been dead that long um, so i'm super thankful for this deer anytime you kill a nice buck you know you're you're very thankful they're all special but this one here is um, pretty sweet because i'll be honest i really didn't think it was going to happen for me this year in tennessee um, it's just been kind of a down year for quality bucks but thankfully this dude showed up the other night on trail camera i didn't realize it was the same deer when i shot him um, but thankful he read the script this morning. I didn't quite do my part on the shot, but I think we've got that ironed out now. But every time I kill one off of this property, I've been hunting it for close to 20 years. I think 18 years is what I figured. And I've killed a ton of great bucks on it. You know, most of them 110 to 20 inches. But every one, I kind of wonder if it's my last one. You know, the lady, has let me hunt for a long time. She's getting up there in age, and uh, hopefully we've got many more years to go, but I know all good things come to an end at some point, and this property has been so good to me over the years. It's where I've learned to bow hunt. So every one that I kill out here just gets a little more special, it seems like. Now, as far as the rest of the year for me goes, we've got, I don't know, two more tags, two more buck tags potentially in Tennessee. I've got one of my, you know, season, buck tags and I've got a quota hunt where I can kill a buck that doesn't count towards the state limit um, here in a few weeks. So maybe we can get on another one or two, but until next time, bow hunter die. Healthy snacks. We're already into our snacks and it's not 8 o'clock yet, but I didn't need anything for breakfast.